Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. The Reverend Christopher Esket is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from Colossians, the first chapter. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. O Lord, have mercy on us. The day we brought him home, I began a routine every night at my son's bedtime. After our prayers and before the blessing, I say to him, James Julius, you are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. It's adapted from the words of the Father at Christ's baptism, and it's echoed in today's reading where we have been transferred into the kingdom of his son, the beloved. Today's Bible reading says that the Father identifies us now with his son. The Father qualifies us or makes us worthy, makes us sufficient to share in Christ's inheritance. He transfers us into his son's kingdom. Well, it's a great thought and they're very easy words to say to an infant. James Julius, you are my beloved son and you I am well pleased. Night after night after night goes by and I continue to be very well pleased. But you know what happened. Of course, the time inevitably came when the old Adam reared his head and gained the upper hand. It had been a very rough evening. Rebellion, rough words, raised voices. I was disappointed in him. I was angry. I was very far from well pleased. Did you ever see The Incredibles? Great movie. I'm not happy, Bob. Not happy. <laughs> well, what then? What now? Do you still say the words? That's the clarifying moment when you are not happy, not well pleased, just the opposite. You ever stood in front of your congregation, not wanted to forgive them? Grace at that moment must triumph over works, the regenerating waters cleansing through tears, sin's stain. For how is it with our Heavenly Father? Would it not be just for him to look on me night after night after night and say, Christopher, with you I am not well pleased. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, who, O Lord, could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. If we can't forgive even before the apology comes, then we do not know the God who, when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Without any merit or worthiness in you, he has qualified you. In our wor world, you qualify by enduring a trial or doing well on a test. But before God, none of us qualifies without the imputation of Christ's quality. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. 
He has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. All the action in this text is divine. He delivers us from darkness. He transfers us to his son. Jesus redeems us. In Jesus, we are forgiven. When God made our first father, he made Adam in the image of God. Adam was not the image of God. He was made in the image. Adam's creation anticipated the incarnation when the image was revealed on earth. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Much ink has been spilled on the mystery of what it means for man to be made in the image and how this relates to Christ who is the image. But Dr. Luther describes it very simply. What does it mean for Christ to be the image of God? He is exactly identical to God the Father, but now visible, incarnate, which is to, which is to say they share the single divine essence and yet are distinct persons. And this means, Luther says, that it is God's own blood poured out for us. And the rule of God is now on earth in what Jesus says and does. So the simple words from Christ's baptism shine his image onto us. The cross rectifies the image once mangled in and by our concupiscence. God's own blood, Luther says in the large catechism, has turned an angry and terrible judge to a kind fatherly heart, irrespective of our own actions. You are reconciled to the Father. However far you have fallen, however grotesquely your impurities have defaced the image, the blood of Jesus is your reconciliation, is your qualification. It is imputed to you. Reconciliation with the Father and among the brethren so that our lives also become cruciform. His blood qualifies you. So now, the word to the image echoes out onto you without hesitation from a fatherly, divine, kind heart. He no longer has to think, will I? Will I say the words? Are, am I still well pleased in you? Yes, because of Christ, he is. So the words are to you, but not dependent on you. You are my beloved sons and daughters. In you, I am well pleased. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Chapel. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about long and short-term opportunities to serve, visit servenow.lcms.org.